Hey everyone, this is Kyle, the Simulation Lab here in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, back again with another tutorial using 3D Studio Max and TieFlow. Uh, today we're going to be making these like knots. We're going to make making making some knots. We're going to get naughty. Um, so uh, I made this example video here of uh, just some like rubber band like loops that are interconnected and then they pulled up, you know, like pulled and they kind of bind up and stuff. So you can do all kinds of cool stuff like this. So I'm sure uh, around like Instagram or around the internet you've seen uh, videos that uh, people make uh, where they make simulated knots um, or like rope or rubber like uh, you know twisting like this. Um, so it's it's relative it's very simple to do in TieFlow. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, focus on the method, and then I might just like focus on this second one, being that it's like a little bit more complex, and I'll just kind of go through it step by step of how I made this. Um, but it is the, the, both both um, knots that I made here in this example um, use the exact same method. So um, once you do it once, uh, you'll know how to do it, and you can just explore and do anything you want with these sort of like loop-like knots. Um, yeah. So we'll, in this tutorial, we'll be focusing on this one. So let's uh, let's jump in, and I'll show you how I did it. So like always. Unit setup. Uh, I think for this, we're just I just use centimeters. One unit equals one centimeter. Um, and then in, in our top viewport, uh, let's go ahead and create a circle. And I'll do it like like a six inch radius circle, something like that. And then. Hmm. Let's set up the little weave pattern first. Like I have here, this the pattern I can't really see, you can't really see, but I like set up like a, it's like weaving, I basically just interlink interlinked a bunch of circles together. I didn't do any complex like scripting or anything to like make that pattern. I literally just like made it in the most simple way possible. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, now that we have our circle drawn, um, I'm just gonna grab it and then hit W or sorry hit E. Turn on your rotate tool and turn on your angle snaps. Make sure that's highlighted blue. And then I'm just going to rotate this 20 degrees. And then hit your W key for your select and move. And then hold shift. And I'm just going to copy that over as a just a standard copy. And I think that that should be good about there. Um, grab this. Copy it down. And you can mirror it in the X axis. There you go. So and then you want to like kind of center that up or something. And then, yeah, and then that's basically your pattern. Um, and then if I grab this and I copy this over like this, you can see that they're all linked together. They're all, they're all looping together there. So that's cool. Um, and then we're going to do that. I'm going to do that one more time. And you don't even need to do that, really. You could just go like this, grab this, and you can about there, copy. I'm going to copy like three of them, something like that. Cool. And then I'll just copy these. I copy that down. Make sure they're all lined up nicely. good and we'll make one more duplicate again you just hold shift and drag and that should be okay I think what we want to do is maybe I'll copy like another one up here I don't know yeah that's good um, all right so now that we have a bunch of loops that are linking linked together right um, I'm going to grab all of these and well before I do that actually I'm, I'm going to uh, let me let me copy another one of these circles out and I'm going to make sure that it's flat so 20 degrees the other way and then I might just like do it uh, 90 degrees and like 45 degrees so that way it gives us another loop that we can that we can like put on the side here because um, in the original video I had these metal loops 
which are a separate part of the simulation, but they're still part of the simulation. So they're just going to be referenced differently. Um, so those are not going to be stretchy. Those are going to be rigid. So we'll set those up now and we'll deal with them later. So I can just copy that over. I can mirror it on the x-axis. And I'll grab these two, hold shift, drag them down, copy, and then I'll mirror these two on the y-axis. And then I'll just kind of put those in there like that. Maybe I'll like move these ones in a little bit. The idea here is you don't want any of them touching. You want, want to give plenty of space, as much space as, as you possibly can in between um, the loops, but you still want them interlinked. Okay, so now that we have that set up, we'll, uh, you know, what we'll do is we'll go drag our, drag the whole thing up in the z-axis, in the, uh, in the z-axis, like that, so it's kind of floating. And we can center this up a little bit more. Okay. Cool. Now that we have that set up, we'll, uh, get to our tie flow. And I guess while we're at it, before we do the tie flow thing, we'll just, uh, we'll create something for it to collide into. In this original video, I did like this sphere that I put like a noise modifier on. So maybe we'll do something like that. So put this sphere in here. Cool. Maybe we'll drag everything up a little bit more. Nice. Awesome. Okay, so now we'll create a tie flow object and put that in our scene. Right? Put that off to the side. And under the modify tab, we will click open editor, right? And I'll drag this out so we can see everything. Cool. And uh, first, things I'm gonna, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to birth spline. So drag a operator out, and then I'm going to grab all of the splines, all of these circles, right? And I'm going to deselect the corner rings, and I'm going to add those. Add those splines here, right? So now in our layers manager, we can, so now that we have all these circles selected, what I could do is just put that in a new layer and call these um, circle refs rubber. I don't know. And then maybe I can grab these four and add them to a new layer called circle refs metal. Make sure my zero layer is still on. Uh, okay, cool. And now I can just turn off circle refs rubber for now because we don't need to see those. Now we see a bunch of dots that uh, represent our rings, which is cool. Now we can see them a little bit more. I'm going to put in a shape operator and change it to geometry. Right. And in the shape operator, I'm going to choose 3D and Geosphere mid-res. And then we're going to want to increase, now the, here's the tricky part, right? We're going to want to increase the size of the spheres according to the thickness of the rubber bands that we want, right? Because the, uh, the size of the spheres are going to be what's colliding, right? In our shape operator under size, I'm gonna change the scale to like 150. Something like that. And that should be okay for now. We can't really tell what's happening, but um, we're going to have to adjust all this stuff because it's a little it's a little tricky. Um, under particle birth in our birth spline operator, we could choose percent along spline. Simple interpolation is fine. And we can just kind of reduce this. And this is really just one way that you can do this. Um, and if you want to make sure that it's like perfectly even, you can kind of like space these out until you get it right. Um, you could do distance along spline and you can like, you know, set the distance and you can like reduce the distance if you want to. Um, another way of doing this, just so you guys know, 
um, is we can even we can just go ahead and erase that um, and I can show you the other way um, which sometimes works a little bit better is you could do birth uh, we could just do a, a, a standard birth operator and you do zero and position object toss in a position object there and then we're going to choose our um, all of our reference rubber circles so if I double click on the layer highlights all of them and we'll go ahead and add selected and then I'll hide that again and what this will allow us to do is we can choose vertices in order and then we can birth like 800 do a little bit more and this will basically just like birth a particle on each vertice of the all, all of the circles looks like that's all of them so now that's perfectly even spaced right and you can you could play with this um, in their position object if you want to do a separation you could turn on separation and have like uh, you know a certain amount of distance a certain amount of separation if you want so you have full control over like the distance that the particles are away from each other at the beginning of the simulation which is really important right so now that we have this set up I'll, I'll just do basically what we did previously I toss in a shape operator choose 3d geosphere mid res and then in our display I'll choose geometry so that way we got a nice and even spacing on all of our spheres along all of our circles and then our shape operator I'll just uh, I'll scale this up a little bit like 150 140 yeah something like that basically what you want is you want uh, you want an even distance uh, or even spacing and you don't want the particles to touch and in our variation I'll choose to put that to zero so they're all exactly the same size so that's looking like it might work I might decrease the scale like 135 something like that yeah there you go I don't don't want them to be touching 130. I'll go with 130 for right now and see if that works Cool. And again, this is like all up to how you like the scale of this of the the radius of the circle that you started with, and all up to your personal preference. You can make the um, scale and the separation and stuff like whatever you want. But I'll show you what happens if we, you know, if we mess with the the uh, separation and the scale of the uh, of the uh, spheres. Okay. So now that we have that set up, uh, I'll set up a physics shape operator so toss one of those in there and just leave this at convex uh, for now and then we'll do um, physics bind and I'm gonna choose rigid joint and our spring and sw our, our swing and twist settings I think I'm gonna go with like 9,000 for spring for both swing and twist and I'll leave the damping where it's at. And then from here, I'm going to choose uh, sort by surface area, smallest first. Okay, and then we scroll down under family bind. I'm going to go bind to siblings. Okay, so we have those checked. And that should be good for the bind settings. And then we'll do physics collision. And we we'll might as well set this up now. So we'll go and we'll pick our sphere. That's going to be our collider, right? And then we'll toss in our spline pads, which will allow us to see our rings again. And so I'll toss that in there, toss the spline pads operator, we'll go create new. So that'll be that'll be in there, and then we're going to want to choose physics bindings. Okay. And one thing I forgot to do um, is in our bind distance, we're going to set this real low, something like the point two something point three. Yeah, set of something real low, 0.2 uh, for your bind distance. And then max binds, we could probably just set that to 1. If we set it to 1, here I'll show you what happens if we set it to 1. Set it to 1, you're going to get a bunch of gaps. right? So we'll set this a little bit higher, something like 2 usually does it. All right, cool. 
Uh, okay, so we have most of that set up. I'll toss this over here. We'll play with our tie splines a little bit more here. So what we're going to want to do is weld bindings. So there's a check that box right there. It's going to weld all of the little segments together. If we have that unchecked, it's going to give you these little individual segments, which, you know, if you want that look, then, you know, cool. But I don't, so we're going to weld the bindings. And then we can choose to uh, weld the knots, too, if you want to. Um, in this case, it doesn't really look like it's having much of an effect. And we could choose our edge faces. And then it's a pretty low poly, so I'm going to um, increase the sides to something like 12. That should give us a pretty smooth result. All right, cool. Nice. Now, okay, so now that we have that set up, um, let's do our rings and we're going to do that in the same flow and basically what we're going to do is I'm just going to right click and disable the flow and I'm going to grab our first event which we can rename that um, rubber bands I don't know <laughs> and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it and then we'll go ahead and, and rename this uh, metal rings and then I'm going to just delete this uh, tie splines object, I guess. And I'll set this to like 100, the particle birth to 100. And then our position object, we're going to click on the three little dots here and go remove all. And then I'm just going to select our circles that we use to create our, our to represent our rings. I'm going to add selected. Okay, and then I'll right click and enable flow. Okay, so now we have our rings referenced, and in our layers, when we assign those to the, its own layer, I'm going to turn those off so we can't see them anymore. And then I'll go ahead and display geometry. Okay, cool. Looks like we need a few more particles there, so I'll just increase that. Oops, 112. Looks like 112 did it for me, um, and that's I'm just doing it as simple, the simplest way possible. You guys can be really much more precise about that. Um, okay, so now that we have that set up, then I'll put in another tie splines operator. So I just wanted to make sure that this one wasn't referencing this first flow because we don't want the two talking to each other. Uh, and then we'll go create new, and I'm gonna change this back to physics bindings. Okay, so now that's showing. Cool. And in our um, metal rings, I could uh, just turn off display objects. Um, and I guess for this one, I, I want... Okay, so let's we'll switch this over real quick. And we'll go ahead and uh, scroll down in our tie splines modifier there. In the, for the object, do well bindings, and then for this one, I want the the radius of the uh, tie splines mesh to be a little bit thicker, something like that. Right. And we'll go display our geometry again. And what I'm gonna want to do is I'm gonna want to uh, increase the radius of this a little bit. So I think for now what I'll do is um, I'll hide this high splines object so we can see what we're doing here. And in the scale, I'll just increase the scale up a little bit. And sorry, I'll do something like uh, 200. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> 200 <laughs> in the scale. Uh, and then in our separation in our position object, turn separation on, and I'm going to decrease that. And then back in our shape, um, in the scale, I'll maybe increase this like a little bit more. So I want them to be pretty, pretty hefty rings. I don't know, something like that. Cool. Um, okay, so now that we have that, uh, I'm going to bring back our layers.
where it went. There we go. And uh, turn back our tie splines object on. And under rigid joint, uh, I'm going to increase the bind distance a little bit. There we go. So now we can see. So that's basically what you have to do in order to tweak the the radius or the scale of the particles and have the radius of the uh, tie splines um, affected. So, okay, so we got some pretty heavy rings now. I can maybe turn that down a little bit. Oop, something like that. You can tweak tweak this to your heart's content, um, but it, it's looking pretty good. And just to make sure, I'm going to turn on our other uh, splines here, and I'm going to in just increase the radius a little bit on these ones too. That should be good. We'll turn those off, and we can turn off just geometry. So now we just see our tie splines objects that are being driven by all of the bindings and physics operators and stuff in our tie flow. So now that we have that set up, um, let's uh, let's check it out. Let's see if uh, see if this thing actually works. So I think I'll turn off edge faces. And we'll kind of just scrub it out and see how it plays out. Cool. Wow, that's looking pretty gooey. I think I might do is um, in our tie flow operator and if under physics, I'm going to change gravity to something like negative 0.5, and I'm going to increase my sub steps to like 20. I don't know. Let me scrub through. It's looking pretty cool. One thing I didn't do is on our rings, on the metal rings, um, I want to change the, instead of joint, I'm going to go to rigid glue. And I'll do enable collisions. That way it, the rings themselves won't um, stretch. So that's looking pretty cool. Now, if you wanted to change the other operator for the rubber bands to be something else, like rigid glue, I'll show you what happens when we do that. They're definitely much more rigid, right? So it's all about preference. It's all about like what you uh, what you want to get out of the simulation. This looks closer to like what I created originally in this example video. Um, maybe a little bit looser but that's that's effectively what I got what I had going on so um, so if you did want to change this back to rigid joint definitely much more loose right much more like rubber bands and what I think I might do is just turn off the uh, ground collider And then in the joint settings, you can set this a little bit higher. You can maybe do like 15,000. 15,000. And then I'll give you a little, little tiny bit more rigidity. A little tiny bit more. So that's looking pretty cool simming nicely in real time um, so you could do a, a million things from here you can uh, increase the size of your sphere increase the radius of that you could uh, let's toss on our mo noise modifier like I had in the uh, example video we could do that um, so uh, I'll turn on my uh, edge faces and I'll do something like uh, 50 or something um, and then just so we can like see what we're doing, I'll just disable the flow. I just, uh, while we're working on the noise modifier, because I want to be able to scrub through the timeline without it updating. So I'll toss in a noise modifier, real simple, and I'll turn on the scale a little bit, and then maybe an X, I'll do like 20, just do like 20 all the way around, 25, all right. Turn on that scale a little bit. 
and then our frequency, we can do a 0.15, and I'll click on Animate Noise. Now if we scrub, you know, it'll give us like that gooey, weird looking, twisted sphere thing. <laughs> Which, that's kind of cool, I guess. I'll do 20 and 20. Turn the scale even more. And this you could just totally just like play around with these settings, get get it to what you want. That's that's looking pretty cool. It's looking pretty close to what I did originally. And then all I really did from here, um, was I just like uh, I think I put let's just do like 210 something, and I'll just like drag this all the way to the end. And then we'll just like set up a little simple little like rotation on it. So if we hit E. For a rotator tool, um, I'll drag the timeline all the way to the end, and I'll turn on auto key, and I'll just like turn it like I don't know, you just do like 270. You do 360 if you want, whatever, whatever you want to do. So that's gonna rotate pretty nicely. So if you play that, you got like a pretty slow moving jelly-like blob that's moving around and it's rotating. So that's kind of cool. Um, okay, so now I'll bring back our tie flow, and we'll right click, enable flow, and then we'll turn off edge faces again, and then I'm going to sim this out, and I'll pause the video and return. Okay, so I got that simmed out, and it's looking pretty cool. I scaled up the sphere to about 15 centimeters. Uh, before I resimmed it, um, so it's uh, pretty close to what I had originally. Maybe it's a little bit more loose. I think I just uh, I might have had a few. Uh, uh, I think I increased the size of the um, spheres inside the rings like a little bit more. Um, but uh, I actually like this one better than my original one. So anyway, now that we have that set up, um, we'll go ahead and do our materials. So, uh, let's see. Let's set up the material real quick. I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so I got my uh, set uh, my main renderer to F Storm, and then under Tools, convert scene to F Storm. Okay, and Kernel settings, light samples, I'll do 12, max depth 24, noise threshold, I'll just set that to 001. And we don't really need anything else in here for right now. Um, I might toss in an HDRI map in a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'll just set up our main uh, materials now for the, uh, for the rings. Um, I'll just do the same materials that I did for this one. So I'll show you guys how I, how I map that. Um, so let's do um, ring uh, rope rings. There you go. And under let's do a F storm bitmap, and I'll choose a bitmap. I think I had yep. So I had a couple maps that I downloaded. Uh, these are some free maps that you can get on um, textures.com. So I'll check uh, check that one. Go back under the maps, I'll just turn that one on. And then under my bump, I'll choose my there's like a just there's like a height map that it came with. So I'll use that for now. And I'll set that to something lower, like one. I don't know. We'll we'll play with that later. Okay, so now that I have that set up, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it to this, to my tie splines object. And obviously, you see it's like totally stretched out. So under UVs, which is super helpful, um, you can keep normalized UVs checked, and you can increase the U and V multiplier. So I'll increase that one a little bit, and I'll increase my V multiplier. So now you're starting to see that a little bit more. I'll maybe decrease this one a little bit.
So that's super helpful to have uh, for doing stuff like rope because it like basically just like bakes on the UVs to the objects, which is really cool. And you can do orientation from world. You can play with you could play with all these different settings in there. It's pretty neat. Okay, and one thing you'll notice is that there's like this kind of stretching thing that's happening in certain places, like right there and here. So what we want to do is uh, grab our tie spline object, and in the tie splines here under interpolation, we'll just do we'll just check off uh, optimize. So we don't want that to be optimizing uh, and messing up our UVs, and that's looking pretty good. The interpolation is still great. I mean, we, the, the UV is working perfectly and the interpolation is, is great, so we don't really need that to be optimizing. If you have like millions of splines or something, then maybe you want to optimize them to reduce poly count a little bit. But for, for in our case, this is uh, this is working really well. So um, I got that UV lining up pretty well. I like how that's looking and stuff. So what I might do is, uh, you know, we can vary the color a little bit. So we could do like, um, okay, so um, I'll do like, um, Rope rings multi. And then I'm going to choose multi sub object, discard the old one, and I'll copy this one down here as a copy. Sure. I'll pop this one open. I'll click in our material, and then where it says Etched on Bitmap, I'll click on that. And I'm just going to put a color correction modifier over the top of it, so I'll keep it as a sub map. So we pop into that, I'll just turn it back on, right? So you can see it in the viewport. And then um, I might just like reduce the saturation a little bit. So you can see what we're working with. I'll bring that over here. And maybe we'll like adjust the hue a little bit. Maybe we'll like make it like a yellow. A softer yellow or something. I don't know. This is what I did uh, for the first one. So now we'll copy this one down here. And then I'll change this one. Maybe in the hue, we'll set it to like, I don't know. You can just play with the colors all you want. I'll set mine to be like a pink like that. And then down here, I'll copy the third one down, click in that one, and then I'll adjust the hue till it's like a blue. like a little bit turquoise blue that should be cool so now we have our three different ring colors right and then uh select our tie our tie splines object i'll apply that and then on top of our tie splines um we'll do a um, material by element and then i'll do like a random uh do a random we'll do a list frequency and we'll do like an even 33, 33, 33. So now in the rendering, that'll show up uh, with different colors. So we'll check that out in a second. Um, all right, so now our ties, this other tie splines object, we want to make them the chrome. Uh, we could do that, we could do like um, make a chrome material. Chrome materials are typically, the diffuse color is black. The reflection is like, Closer to white, right? Glossiness will do like 0.75, and then the IOR will bring that up to like 10. So that'll give us a nice chrome look. Okay, so now we have our chrome. I'll apply that to our rings, and I'll apply that to our little blobby thing, <laughs> to our blob. Cool, and now let's uh, quickly set up a camera. So under F-Storm, under cameras and F-Storm, do a F-Storm camera, and I'll just toss it in like right there. And I'm not going to be too precise with it, so I'll just like drag it up. I'll change this viewport to F-Storm camera. And then under our, with our render settings, under common, I'm just going to do like 1080 by 1080, perfect size for Instagram. And then under SRM camera in the viewport, click on that, and then I'll do uh, show safe frames. And then I'll do default shading. 
Maybe we'll like drag that up a little bit more. And I'll drag it up in Z. So we can see what we're do dealing with here. That's kind of cool. Gonna center it up. Cool. Alright. So under lighting, F storm, F storm light. I'm gonna choose a disc. I'll set that to something like 10 for the power. And I'll just pop that in the scene there. I'll drag that up and kind of just like arbitrarily point it at the object. And I'll do a secondary light and I'll kind of like put it over here. Kind of bring that down a little bit maybe. This is totally arbitrary. If, if I was doing this for real, I'd spend a little bit more time with the lighting and just getting everything right. Um, okay, and then we'll just create a standard backdrop. So now our geometry tab, do a plane. And I'll just stick a plane in there. And we can center that up if you want. And under modify, I'm going to just remove the uh, length and width segments. You could uh, right click on the little scroller to zero it out. To just make it one. I'm gonna drag that down a little bit, and then I'll toss in an edit poly modifier. Turn on edges. Grab the edge, the back edge face, and hold shift and drag up in Z. So that'll give me a little uh, backdrop. And then I don't want to see that seam, so I'm gonna grab the edge seam there. I'll put on a chamfer modifier, do a standard chamfer, and I'll just drag that up. And I'll do something like 40 segments, so it's nice and uh, nice and rounded. Cool. And then I'm going to do one more light um, as like a tertiary light, and uh, that's just going to be a standard plane. And we'll just make it nice and skinny all the way back in there. Beautiful. And I'll drag that up and I'll just angle it to face toward the backdrop. So it just washes the backdrop. That's that way we get like a nice even background. Um and it offers a little bit of like ambient lighting, which is kind of cool. And then last but not least in the environment map, click on that little checkbox and and uh, inst Okay, instead of choosing this general bitmap, you want to go and choose an F-Storm bitmap, right? And we have that in there now. I'll just drag this over to the material editor as an instance. And we'll choose spherical environment. And I'll go ahead and choose an HDRI map. Okay, so I'm going to choose this HDRI map, just like just a random one that I have. Um, Okay, so we got that in there, and I'm going to change the gamma to like 2.2. Maybe I'll change the multiplier to something like 2. We'll just see how this looks. So now that we have that set up, um, under interactive render, uh, let's just go ahead and render it out. I'm going to save this real quick. Okay, got the file saved, and I'm ready to render. So hit RT mode. Cool. So that's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty close to what I had. So you know, uh, we can increase the lighting. We can play with the lighting just like a little bit. And I'll lock the viewport there. And I'll grab our primary light. I might just put another light on top. Something like that. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty bright. <laughs> but it's uh, it's pretty important to like make crucial decisions about what you want to do with the lighting. Like there's a lot of reflections happening in the top of the sphere, I'm not really liking that. So I might I might light this directly from the HDRI map, um, which in that case you'd just pop this little setting on here, direct lighting, and then I would just disable a lot of the other elements that I have. Um, 
uh, sorry, I would disable a lot of the other lights that I have, but in this case, this is looking pretty cool. Maybe I'll just like disable the visibility of that light. Awesome. Well, it's looking pretty cool so far. I'm pretty happy with the way this one's turning out. Um, it's very similar to my original video. Um, I All I really did was just tweak the color like a little bit more and uh, popped it in a post and added some sound effects and stuff, and that, that was pretty much it. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys got something out of this. Um, if you like the video, if you like the tutorial, please uh, smash that like button and subscribe for more. Got a bunch of more ideas of stuff I want to do. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know what you thought of the video in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials or different methods of doing this one in particular or questions about it or anything, let me know. Um, all right, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and, uh, and we'll see you soon.